Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we have my friend Rebecca with us and we're gonna be talking breast cancer. Since it is October, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So there are lots of risk factors with breast cancer, but one of which is the BRCA1 mutation. All right, so I'm gonna ask Rebecca some questions and um, okay, let's just jump right into the video. Jump. What is the BRCA1 mutation? Well, BRCA, BRCA1 and BRCA2, it's simple. They're, they're all genes, they're both genes. <laughs> um, they're breast cancer genes. It's literally known as the breast cancer gene. They come from our parents. Thanks, mom and dad, for those things. Um, and they don't cause an issue unless there's a mutation. Um, that mutation increases your chances of getting specific cancers if you do have that mutation. So, so can BRCA1 only increase your risk for breast cancer specifically? No, actually it increases your risk for not only breast cancer, but there's several additional cancers. Ovarian, uh, for women, ovarian cancer, fallopian tubes, peritoneal cancer, and actually men, can have this mutation too since they you know they are also people. have they have they also have also genes. have parts they have most parts <laughs> um and whatnot <laughs> they have most parts. we don't share genes on the outside but on the inside <laughs> um but they have i think increased risk for prostate mm -hmm. what else oh well male breast cancer yes yes male breast cancer and then both BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations um, increase your risk for pancreatic cancer. So I'll tell you what you can't get. <laughs> yeah. That's, I feel like, less of a list. But yeah, so it's not just breast cancer. So how can you find out if you're a carrier of the BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation and is it even covered by your insurance? So when, yes, it is, it, it is covered most of the time. Okay. Um, it depends greatly on, from what I understand, your family history. Okay. Um, if someone has a history of cancer and their great uncle's best friend's neighbor, it's not going to be covered. But, you know, first degree family members, oftentimes, depending on their cancer, you can get it covered. So now. mom, dad, siblings. Yeah. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, mom, Children. dad, siblings. Yes. Some people tend to think that you can get this DNA test in the mail. It's not that genetic testing. Like an ancestry right. thing? You don't. Okay. That's great to know all of your ancestors, but... You this is a more your, specific yeah, This test. is your gene, okay. this is your blood, That's and good to know. we want to know, does your BRCA1 and BRCA2 have a mutation on okay. that strain of DNA? Um, and the insurance will cover it, like I said, if, okay. if there's a strong family history. So when you go get, it's just blood work, you said. When yeah. you go get this blood work, I know when I go to the doctors and I'm getting like a cholesterol or sugar, they tell me that the results come back the next day in like 24 to 48 hours. Are these results just as fast? No, good point. So they're not as fast. They take um, three to four weeks. Oh, wow. You know, right. Okay. So that's like a long that. time to wait for those results. <laughs> yeah. And in that time, you get to thinking a lot of things and you have no idea. So that's torture. Yeah. So what can you do if you find out you're positive for the BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation? Well, there's several options, including nothing. You can do nothing. Um, okay. And that's, you know, as a patient, that's your choice. Of course. Um, you can also pick, like, aggressive surveillance, which means, like, every maybe three to six months alternating. Okay. Um, you can get an MRI and then a sonogram, and depending on what so you're So just really... monitoring with your doctor, come up with... Yes. Coming up with a plan. And come up with a plan. <laughs> Both. It's a medical term. <laughs> um, yes. Surgical intervention. Okay. Um, there are risk reduction surgeries. Um... There are prophylactic surgeries, it's just basically doing something before it becomes an issue. Right, right. And the problem with, if you do have this mutation, the problem with it is that it doesn't mean 100% that it'll develop into cancer. You could go your whole life and never get it, which that is kind of like a mind. So you could have surgery and in the long run, nothing was ever going to happen. Or you could not have surgery and do nothing, like you said, was an option. And then it ended up turning into something. That's, yes. It could be nothing and it could be everything. And you really, the problem is, is that you just don't know. But with those numbers and that increase of developing these cancers, that's where you come up with, oh my gosh, maybe I should just go ahead and get the problem removed before it becomes be an issue. Be prophylactic about it. Wait, hang on. Cheers. Coffee break. Ah, brisk, brisk. Okay. 
So have you ever been tested for the BRCA1 mutation? Yeah. Why? Okay, so over the summer, um, I changed doctors and uh, I was filling out the paperwork and as I was filling it out, I was running out of room in the family history, part of it, um, filling out all the cancer in the family. So it's, it's apparent, you know, it's, it was pretty evident that you had a big very, family yeah, history. Yes, yes. Um, so although no one had um, genetic testing prior, um, my mom did have peritoneal and ovarian cancer. I think she was diagnosed in, let's see, I think 2004. But with peritoneal um, and ovarian cancer, their the prognosis is so poor. Okay. I mean, there's the when you end up getting this. Um, if you end up getting ovarian cancer, oftentimes you're not diagnosed. You're very, you're not symptomatic until the very it's too late basically you're basically not symptomatic until it's metastatic okay um hashtag that <laughs> um <laughs> anyway because you, you don't have issues you yeah. know you think as a female like oh, i've got some cramps like having a uterus is so cool <laughs> so cool so cool so cool and so you won't realize it's cancer um until you have bloating you know that's the ascites part that's yes. your fluid filling up so metastatic means just for anyone that it's spread. It's spread. To yeah, pretty much. Any, I mean, any other organ. Ovarian cancer. It is the deadliest uh, gynecological cancer, and I feel like it's never really talked about. I mean, which is just yeah, it's sad because it it does not discriminate on age. Um, it's a beast. Yes, that's not the B word I was thinking of. <laughs> when my mom was diagnosed, she was in her late forties. And she, you know, she went to remission and it's, it almost is like, and I don't mean to say this, but it was just in her case, you know, remission was just kind of a tease. Um, I was 20 when she died. She died when she was 50. And, um, Very young. Yeah. She, she was, she had just turned 50 in November and then ended up going palliative care after having some issues related to, you know, the cancer. Yeah. Um, and she, so she was in the Francis house. She died my March 21st, 2008, just six days before my 21st birthday. So having that as like a really big, you know, like memory and yeah. you don't really stop thinking about Never. that. That's, that's one of the reasons why. That's carried. That's that, why I got tested. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So when you got tested, what were your results? Positive for the mutation. For BRCA1. One. one rude rude so what have you decided to do about it well I decided to go right ahead and I had a plan I had a plan. I always knew in my whole life that I would have this like plan. if I'm positive this is what I'm going to do this is yeah I'm gonna go down and it was almost like hard not to say I wasn't there wasn't a I said if but I knew something in that I was like I'm proud I have to have it I have to have it otherwise life would be easy <laughs> So, obviously, if there's an issue and I could take care of it, then I'm going to just go ahead and do it. Yeah. And I had, um, I had learned that my biggest risk factor for the breast cancer part of it is uh, triple negative breast cancer, which is the most aggressive and difficult to treat. Okay. Um, and you think when you're young, like, ah, oh, it's fine. Triple no. negative breast cancer? Right. It sounds like, oh, there's not even an issue. It's so negative. <laughs> well, no. It's aggressive. Um... It's the kind of breast cancer that you can't... So it's the worst kind that you could get? For me, with this mutation, okay, yes. Okay. I feel like every breast cancer is bad. That's but this specific one is the hardest to treat. Okay. Um, and the prognosis isn't exactly Good. the best. Okay. Um, and when you're young and your body's producing all these things, it's, it's great, except for when it produces the wrong thing, which is that triple negative. Okay. Um, so you can't really fight it because your genes all mutated. Rude. And it thinks it's okay. And it's not. It's not. Not. So I decided to go to a breast surgeon. Okay. And I was established with one before just because of that family history. Okay. And um, so I had like a consult at first. Yeah, it was, and I thought I had everything under control, right? You're I like, got this point. Here, I'm gonna come in, and this is my plan that now I now you do it because I said it. We <laughs> don't have questions. I was the patient for the first time in a long time. She's a nurse. Um, well. I actually ended up having these appointments back to back. Okay. I met with a GYN oncologist um, 
and the next day I had my breast, you know, appointment. So I was like, this is great. My plan is clearly working. <laughs> um, I met with the, 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 uh, the GYN and he's like, okay, so let me know when you want me to take your uh, uterus out. I was like, what? <laughs> now? Like, I don't want any more kids, but I also don't want menopause. It's rude. <laughs> I already have a chin here that comes up every once in a while. I don't need more. <laughs> that a hysterectomy under the age of 35 has a whole, a whole strain of issues yeah. itself, you know. Pre-menopause or early menopause sucks just as bad as menopause when you're expecting oh it. God. So fun being a girl. Um, so fun. I had this plan and I'm like, oh, I'll just get this hysterectomy like when I'm 35. I don't yeah. know why this number is so magic in my head. Like, oh, I gotta be 35 because that's when my uterus doesn't even matter anymore. Yeah. Incorrect, however, because if there was um, a potential for going into early menopause, I would have to take hormones. And my knowledge was that you can't, you shouldn't have certain hormones when you're, um, have the possibility of having, you know, your increased risk okay. of breast cancer. Um, Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So when when the specific doctor I met with was like, oh, you can just take estrogen. And I was like, he knows nothing. <laughs> um, it's like he didn't hear me. <laughs> well, well, the joke was on me. And the next day when I went with my, went to the breast surgeon, I was like, can you believe this guy? She's like, no, I can. Um, because you can take estrogen. Okay. Uh, replacement for like those menopause symptoms. And some women don't get them. I probably will get all of them plus extras that aren't even making sense. <laughs> I'll grow a prostate. <laughs> probably. Maybe um, you all the pills. I'd be like, here, you're going to grow a prostate. You also are going to have prostate cancer. <laughs> Rebecca. I was a little confused. I thought I had everything under control. And I felt pretty defeated after these appointments. And... I, I, because when I went in, like I said, when I went in with the breast surgeon, she's like, actually, no, he's right. You could do that uh, risk reduction um, hysterectomy, and then we can just do some imaging every certain amount of months. And I, the anxiety with the imaging itself, okay, yes, it's inconvenient um, that you have to get out of work or go ahead of time or whatever and have these every six months, an yeah. MRI or an ultrasound plus your mammogram. But it's the, uh, wait a minute, it was clear last you know, six months ago, what if there's something now? Right. You know, it's yeah. that thought process, which I wasn't even thinking about until I had to think Anxiety about Anxiety almost. Yeah, it's just, it's it's too much. It's too much. Um, so, in my opinion, So you decided has, just to go right for, let's just cut it off. Yeah, let's talk about a Surgery. mastectomy. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I went in and I said I want to do, go right ahead with a prophylact prophylactic bilateral mastectomy okay so they said okay fine usually people start with the hysterectomy we're doing mastectomy. things I guess a little backwards yeah um, and so they're gonna thinking, get them so they suggested to get the hysterectomy and then the mastectomy but you're doing the mastectomy and then the hysterectomy yes okay and I don't know why <laughs> but I wanted a little control over the plan <laughs> I had to get some baseline imaging to make sure there wasn't anything already, which yeah. also was kind of like, oh crap, I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but nothing, it was all clear. No, right. Okay. All Good. clear. We did the breast imaging and the um, ultrasound of the uterus and everything, and that's been clear. So Good. the next step was meeting with a plastic surgeon, because there's more than one surgeon involved, obviously, with a mastectomy because I'm choosing mastectomy with reconstruction. And everything seemed to kind of line up. Uh, yeah. I had my imaging on a Wednesday, the following Monday after I had the results. Um, I had my, I guess I'll say final um, appointment with yeah. the surgeon that I needed to meet with. And they were great. They were really informative. There's also, if you want to do, what's it? It's a mastectomy with... Um, when you do the reconstruction, you take from other parts of your body. I mean, you do like the abdominal flap okay, and the adipose tissue from there. So you're like your own Bad. donor, basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, or you can do the implants. And then there's something called fat grafting afterwards because once the swelling goes down in your breast, um, you know, you need some cushion around it. Right. It, otherwise, it would just kind of be two circles. So you, they, you, know, you can do a little fat grafting. They take it from okay. which I volunteer any of the fat. <laughs> Take it from anywhere. If anybody needs a volunteer for any fat grafting. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's kind of like a natural filler. So you haven't gotten this done yet? No. No, it's actually scheduled um, for November 3rd. 
I hope I'm not the worst patient in the no. world because I'm going to be like, no, it's fine. I'll just, um, they say nurses are the worst patients. Well, I don't want to inconvenience anybody. And I'm like, wow, oh, that's so stupid. It's your, you know what I mean? Like you're there trying to heal and I'll be but like, this is like, I changed my own dressing. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you're like, now you have an infection. No, you do. <laughs> um, so I decided to go this route. Yes. Um, surgery's coming up. Yeah, surgery's coming up. I decided to go this route because uh, I don't want to have cancer. Yeah. Nobody does, obviously. But if there's steps you can take to be right preventative um, as much as you can. And the problem with this is that, hi, I have BRCA1 mutation. I could have cancer or I couldn't, and I could do surgery or I don't, but if I do, then I might, and if I don't, then I will, but also I don't. So it's a mind F. Mind game, yeah. Yes, game. Um, but and you have three kids. Right, and I want to set an example. Yeah. I would hate to look back and think, well, I guess I could have done something, Yeah. you know, and my kids are not going to have me. And, um, next year at some time, I'll, I will have the hysterectomy. Um, and that, like, heal time's like a day now. <laughs> But it's like a couple, you know, they do a yeah. laparoscopic and they take Probably it out. Almost like having a C-section, maybe. Yeah. Yes. Least, you know, I like a lot of the information I did find on YouTube. Okay. I did find on Reddit. Okay. But for for the you know accredited sites, of course, um, the American Cancer Society. I went and found some information on. Um, there were some Facebook support groups um, about the BRC. We can link um, websites and, and any information that you use that you found helpful or any specific YouTube videos even. Yeah. Um, we can link them down in the description box below so that if you guys want to check those out or if anyone out there um, is going through something similar or has gone through something similar or is um, questioning whether they should get um, BRCA1 or 2 mutation tested, um, there's there'll be some good information down below in the description box for you to check out mm -hmm. also the Carol Baldwin Foundation we live in upstate New York and Carol Baldwin is from this area and she's been a huge 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 uh, support system for a lot of women specifically in this area and probably all over the United mm -hmm. States but her foundation is wonderful so we're also going to link that down below for you guys if you want to check that out or donate mm -hmm. for more research Susan, Susan G. Coleman Susan G. Coleman will link and that down the below the Hope for Heather that's ovarian cancer okay that's local. Um, some of these I don't know you would know more mm -hmm. so we'll link but we'll link everything down below um, also, if you guys are interested in seeing more of Rebecca's journey with us, she's obviously just getting started with all this. Um, if you want to see her um, recovery after she has her breast surgery, we can do another updated video on um, what actually happened during surgery and maybe a few weeks after her recovery, an updated video. And even following into her hysterectomy when she ends up having that, we can um, do more with that because this is so prevalent in women and even men. It's so important to get information to spread the word about it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. We hope it was informational for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Thank you mm -hmm. for sharing your story thank you with us. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Um, find me on Instagram because my comments are still turned off. Um, you can hit me up um, through Instagram and let me know if you guys want to see more of Rebecca in these videos. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll catch you in our next one. Bye. A uh, title. Uh -huh. What we can either do? Let's talk breast cancer, BRCA one and two mutations. <laughs> Stumbling out of bed, and I still got you in my head. From all those pretty words you said, it's like I'm wasted. Every time I see your face, I'm losing track of time and space I don't know where I am, it's like I'm wasted